Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Welcome to another episode of Glacial Awakening. Today, it's moving day. And I went and found this little hilltop sitting next to some cliffs that look pretty nice. And it's not entirely spacious, because it's actually pretty small, but I've got it all fenced in, at least the area I intend to use in the short term. I've started moving stuff over here. I made some cardboard boxes to facilitate that because cardboard boxes are actually easy to make in this pack because you can make them with the sky resources to sawdust, which is just made by using a rock grinder on wood. So that makes packing up everything at least easy in this case. I still need to go bring over all of the other machinery and start working on it. I'm trying to get a feel for the area around here and what I actually want to build. And it gets every fiber of my being, I'm not going to be doing a time lapse because I'm not going to be doing this in a single build. I don't know what I want to do quite yet. I just know that I wanted to build here next to these cliffs maybe I'll do something out into the cliffs eventually but I just this looked like a good area to build but I have no idea of what to use for materials because I don't have that many options right now I just don't so I think I'm gonna go grab the machines and maybe make a basic work area over here to start with at least so we have something at least usable and maybe a start small storage area so I don't just have crates sitting on the snow over here and maybe get started on a basic theme for the area Okay, so I spent way, way too much time and way too many materials that I couldn't really afford to do this, but here we have a basic pyrotech smithing area where I managed to put all my tools and I no longer have to worry about it setting stuff on fire. Well, other than me, that's unfortunate. And yeah, I, I know, it looks a little sithy. It's, it's the red windows. I, I wanted to replace them with something else, but I don't have the materials to make what I want right now. So we're going with evil smithy here. Sorry, folks. I'll probably redo it at some point because this is kind of actually bugging me now that I'm sitting in here staring out the windows. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm actually pretty happy with how this happened. It's not just a box. It's not even completely symmetric. So I'm pretty okay with this so far. Although as a general overall theme for my base, probably not. But this is just supposed to be an open air workspace. And it pretty much accomplishes that. Now watch me not have room for a bunch more machines I'm going to have to shove in here. But for now, I'm going to call this good. Over here on the less evil side of the hill, I've also made a small garden. Uh, it's not completely filled out yet just because I just haven't bothered because I'm going to need the plants here shortly though because we need it because we're going to continue on with roots today. Because if we come back in here to chapter two, the very first thing we need to make are the runic shears and we need the runic shears to get the spirit herb and you get the spirit herb from shearing beetroot. So if I wasn't growing beetroot, this wouldn't be able to happen, would it? But to make the runic shears, it's another fake crafting step using the Pereskia we made last time as well as some runestone. And I need to get some more iron for some shears because I've only been using bone ones so far. Uh, time to go set myself on fire, but at least I'll be able to do it in the safety of my new enclosed shielded area that won't get set all on fire. Well, it'll get set on fire. It just won't burn down. All right, runic shears obtained. And we just come in here and right click the beats. We now have our spirit herb. All right, so moving on, let's go get our Zen crystals from this, which this is actually kind of an insulting reward because do you see those green crystals over there or the blue ones over there or the green ones over there or they come in a bunch of different colors? Those all drop Zen crystals and it's an extremely common ore in this pack. It's all completely decorative, so I didn't really need more, but it's not that big a deal. Next, it wants to create wildwood, which you get from growing it from wild root with a ritual. And the ritual requires something we haven't had to do before, which is get bark. And you get bark by breaking logs with a knife instead. Not any different than the ax. So let's start up another fire. It does require a fully grown wild root. I have it over here. This is actually through a zone wall, so I don't know if it'll reach, but it should. Oh, interesting. This also specifically requires dark oak bark, which would explain why the ritual's not working as is. But it's a good thing that I had to make dark oak fences because I did increase my bonsai farm, including dark oak. So that was some dumb luck. Smashy, smashy. All right, and now the ritual shows like it's gonna go. Let's try this again. And when that completes, we should have a tree over here. And there we go, a big old wild wood tree, which of course it wants us to chop down. But hey, at least it's giving us even more Zen crystals. It's like it wants me to know that this has this, except we can't really use much of this other than the stone I used in the smithy that I created to until we get some glowstone. But now we move into another magic mod that I've never used before, Natural Aura. And this requires the Book of Natural Aura, eight gold leaf, and eight wood stands. 
The Book of Natural Aura is pretty easy to make and thankfully I've been making paper, which you can do from pulp, which you get from soaking either wood chips or sugar cane in water. And I've just been doing the wood chips as I get them. And the gold leaf tells you how to do it. We just have to transform a tree, so I've gotta go plant something. And the wooden stands just require the leaves we made and wildwood logs. The brilliant fibers, however, require gold. <laughs> so I'm kind of moderately happy that I haven't really used the gold that I've made yet. So that part shouldn't be too hard. All right, so I've got the brilliant fiber made. It said something to the book about putting it on the crown of the tree, but I suspect this works like the silkworms and you can put it lower, but let's see if this works. And yep, golden leaves up the top. Now I think we just have to wait. All right, so this process is just agonizingly slow. I don't know if it's tied to the game time or not. It seemed to increase when I slept, but it might be completely unrelated. But you can see the top of the tree slowly starting to transform. So I took the rest of the threads and I planted two more trees down there. Got a slightly bigger one, put two on that, and put one on the smaller one. And it does spread like silkworm stuff does, so I don't think it matters where you put it. Although I lost a couple leaves on the, the bigger tree when I put the thread in it. I don't know why. I need to wait for these to finish before I can go gather some leaves, but I'm probably gonna want these cooking pretty much all the time now. Which means I probably need a dedicated spot for trees. <laughs> I didn't think this through when I set this up, but I may need to push those fences out. But we're good for right now though. While I was waiting on the trees, I did realize something. I could build the rustic apiary, which is actually a bit weird because you have to create the beehive to get the bees from. Because normally you get the bees, it drops from a beehive, and normally you find those in the wild. But in this case, we can make it by making an apiary and surrounding it with flowers. And the apiary is just wood. So none of that was changed. And in case you haven't seen my Enigmatica series, I go into this, these, these actually are a fertilizer. They constantly uh, help plant growth in the area around it. I believe it's one above or one below the block that it's on. So as long as it's within your field, it's pretty good. All right, still waiting on the tree, but it does seem to be speeding up now that there's more leaves down there as well. That one's almost completely converted. But I did some more uh, exploring for things to do. And you might notice that these are my strainers set up here. I actually did two things here. For one, I removed a lot of the hoppers that were in a hopper chain there because I wanted to be able to pipe them up to the chest here. And to do that, I used the Inspirations pipe, which is two iron, which was expensive to make four of them. And they kind of act like hoppers that can be directionally input into things. So you can move them up and down more easily. But what it can't do is extract from an inventory. So you have to basically hook it up to a hopper. So that's what I've got. I've got hoppers on the bottom of the strainers that lead to pipes that go up to this chest. Now, on top of this strain right here, I've got a new type of strainer. I've got the fisherman strainer, which is a bunch of sugar cane around the net. And what this lets you do is collect fish and a couple other random items, but it also collects enchanted books just like fishing can. That said, this requires bait. And bait means worms in this case. And if you come to the information, this tells you that you can get worms by digging through dirt with a garden trowel, which is just basically an alternate shovel, but requires more iron, which means this is expensive. So here's hoping I get some enchanted books and they're actually decent, but I'm not holding my breath. There's a way you can increase the efficiency of the strainer though, by using these bait pots, but that requires iron bars which requires a lot more iron. And I'm not putting myself through that right now. It'll, it'll come a time, but it's that time is not right now. All right, so that last leaf right there is taking forever to transform, but I'm calling this good. Time to make it rain. And down come the gold leaves. Now the trees do supposedly have a chance of dropping the brilliant fibers and this one didn't. So we'll hope the other ones do and I don't have to go make some more because I would hate to use more gold. But now we can make the wooden, it's this wooden stands we need, which as a reminder was just wildwood logs and gold leaf. And with that, we are now finished. Which of course means it's gonna immediately make us use those to do a nature's aura ritual probably. To make tokens of joy. Cause yep, we need to set these up are probably around a tree, but we'll have to take a look at what it needs. Cause I don't actually know how to do this yet. And one of the things we need is bottled sunlight. <sighs> I guess I gotta go do some more reading in the nature's aura book because I don't know how to do any of this stuff and it probably just unlocked a bunch of stuff by getting the leaves. Turns out that the uh, solution is really simple. It's a bottle with a cork aimed at the air and you make the bottle with the cork just by a normal bottle and a plank. You can even supposedly even put them in a dispenser and have the dispenser shoot them out to automatically fill them. Yep, and there we go, bottled sunlight. Despite the fact that it's sunset, you can't fool me, traitor son. Okay, and so to do the ritual, you need to set up this basic forest, the ritual of forest here, which is a sapling, which we're not gonna put down until we're ready, with a pattern of gold powder and then the wooden stands. The golden powder is just made from crushing up the gold leaf, and it works almost identical to redstone powder as far as placing it goes. 
All right, once you've got everything laid out in a circle around it, you then put all of the items from the recipe you want onto the wooden stands and then plant the sapling. And, when the, and if I understand this correctly, when the sapling grows, this should do the ritual and it should consume the sapling. Let's find out. And there's some magic going on. And there it goes. So that's another step done. And it's rewarding with candle lily pads. Oh, decorative lighting though, that sounds nice. Which leads us to a step that will hopefully mean we don't need to use the bloomery anymore, although it supposedly is lower out, but we'll still have to manually create the ores, which is the real problem. But this is at least another option. And that's the natural altar, which the altar itself isn't too hard to build. It's just stone, gold, a leaf, and the token of joy doing the exact same thing we just did. But we also need the environmental eye, which is another recipe really similar to the last, but requires a gold ingot and a spider's eye, so it's a good thing I sit at the fisher and we have one now, otherwise I have to go find some spiders. All right, first up's the environmental eye. Here we go again. And this one is on our bar. It's supposed to show us how much energy is, how much ore is in the area or on a block. I think it's more useful with the actual next thing we're gonna make though, because I'm not seeing anything here. Also, have I mentioned how much I hate the health and food bars? It's hard for me to tell when I'm damaged or hungry in this mod for some reason. It just the usual indicators just aren't there blinking at me. And now the natural altar. Oh, hey, Nifty, I have a little eye badge now. All right, and with that, we now have the natural altar done. I'm probably not gonna leave it here. I'm actually probably gonna place it up there somewhere where I'm gonna do actual ore processing, but I don't know. But if we look at it here, you can see that I can see a bar under it probably due to the eye, and that should be the amount of power that it has. And this actually does a lot of really interesting things because it does transmutations. One of the big ones for me would be rotten flesh into leather because I've got a ton of rotten flesh from killing zombies and head crumb guys. But it also does iron ore into iron nuggets and a few other useful things. Directly converts dirt into worms for bait, which dramatically increases the amount of worms you get since you get a ton of dirt trying to dig for them. Although right now you need to replace a lot of snow with dirt, so I won't be doing that anytime soon. Speaking of, I did get two enchanting books with all the bait that I used, the stack and a half or a bit less, and it gave me power two and efficiency one. I mean, they're free, but I, I just, no, no guys, no. That said, to use the natural altar much like Astral Sorcery and a bunch of other mods, we need to create a structure to put it down on. And thankfully it does have a visualizer, although it doesn't have the parts list here, which is actually kind of annoying. All right, so now that I've got the structure made, you can see power flowing into the altar. If we look at it, you can see it's bar filling up. Now, while constructing this, there were a couple of gotchas. One, these right here, the chiseled stone brick. If you go into chisel, you'll note that this is not it, this is chiseled stone. You still need the one up here that is chiseled stone bricks. This caused me quite a bit of confusion despite the fact they look almost identical. Two, these ones right here are golden stone bricks. They're also up on top of here. If you put a normal stone brick up here, it will still turn into that color and it'll make it look like it's right, but they are not. These are really golden stone bricks, which are made by combining with brilliant fibers. So, uh, this gets expensive as far as gold goes. But now that we've got this, let's put the iron, one remaining normal iron ore I have on here and see what happens. And you can see it's giving out some particles. And we've got some nuggets. Now you can supposedly automate this with hoppers. I haven't looked into how, because I'm not sure how you would extract it, but I believe there are instructions. Yeah, in the quest book on the next step. Because there, under this, there is a single block of dirt under the altar. It's not part of the altar multi-block structure, so that should work. But let's go collect out our new search, our new crafting grid thing. Interesting. So it looks like I can pull from chests. That'll be nice. And let's click this so we can clear this too. And with that, I think we're going to call it a day because now we've started Andrew's Ore and we started building a base and it felt like a really, really long day despite the fact that I don't feel like I did all that much. But now we've got the start of some new things going. Anyhow, if you found this episode interesting and entertaining, please consider leaving a like or subscribing if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.